Welcome back to our new 12.0 tier list video for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, similar to the last video, scripting of characters, um, we have now the upper mid tier. We see these characters in tournaments much more often, and you know, you usually have more proof behind their placement. Their usage and meta advancement, we can see them take over high tiers and other mid tiers. They usually have a counter explore part of the game plan that make them falter against better characters, but in most cases, upper mid tiers can definitely hold their, hold, uh, their own against uh, almost the entire cast. Uh, starting with the up mid tier, we have Bayonetta, who was buffed in patch 12.0. Look, any character that has, you know, still zero death combos like Bayonetta is going to be in this tier. Bayonetta has actually had an insane amount of results. Um, 11 tournament wins in August from multiple players, and even though this character got nerfed to the ground compared to what she was in Brawl, it's very, you know, very clear and indicative that in the right hands, you can still get zero death combos, you can still, you know, completely destroy approach from a lot of characters. And if someone makes a mistake, you know, and you land that zero death combo, it's still going to be incredibly tilting. So this character is by no means bad, and upper mid tier is the lowest out of the Bayonetta, especially in 12.0. Also in upper mid tier is Bowser. Bowser is basically the quintessential heavy. He has an awesome advantage state, and he can really strike fear into his opponents. The only issue is he struggles hard at disadvantage and has linear recovery routes. Uh, he's picked up some wins too, three of them, and I think the main Bowser we all know and love, who's placing... Both online and offline is Leon, and uh, Leon recently had an incredible uh, run in the Hermes Temple tournament in France, and he's also had some really good runs here in the States as well. Um, you just have to know how to be evasive with him and not fall into uh, insane combo strings from very, very oppressive characters and zoners. So if, as long as you can do that, you know, he's got really good kill power, really good... Um, up smash out of shield, you know, devastating back air, a neutral bid does a lot of damage, really good tilts, and of course, fortress up be out of shield. Um, you just gotta be careful with him. But yeah, the quintessential heavy, definitely an upper mid tier character. Also, an upper mid tier, I've got Samus and Dark Samus. Uh, we've actually seen a lot more uh, of Samus throughout the online period. Uh, lots of online Samus, as he was considered one of the characters that has more of an edge and was buffed online because of the input delay. Uh, I put Samus in upper mid tier before, but it's actually getting near the point of her being high tier worthy. But I think it's likely due to the online environment. Um, you know, Samus does have four tournament wins from different players. And I think with this character, you know, the fact that she has a lot of movement options which are tricky to follow up through. So you can be slippery in the air and it's really hard to follow up where exactly she's going to be. Also, an incredible good pivot grab, uh, you know, charge shot, missiles, really strong back air. A lot of strength and a lot of versatility for this character. So definitely at least upper mid tier. Also in upper mid tier, I have Hero. Uh, who are one of the most controversial DLC characters ever dropped due to his RNG nature. Uh, this character, there's not much to say apart from the fact that he's literally as inconsistent as they come because he is essentially RNG dependent, depending on, you can do the exact same inputs in one match or another, and it could be a coin flip whether you win or lose. Um, he has extremely explosive potential, no pun intended, but with that spell book, there's so much that can happen. I mean, as, but if you're looking for a, a consistent meta, Getting your oomphs, your psych ups, getting your accelerados, all the, all the, the, the spells that buff up hero, using those properly and landing all your hits and maybe getting a crit here and there. You know, if you stick to that game plan, you're going to find success. And it's about, you know, getting rid of the chance and make it more guaranteed. In middle tier, I also have Lucas. Uh, we'd see a lot more out of Lucas if the other mother up wasn't so much better, being Ness. Uh, he's still a solid character, but nothing's really changed. We don't have too many results with Lucas, and it's hard to justify playing him when Ness is right there. But I have seen a lot of people sort of push the meta with him a good bit, finding really innovative ways to get PK fire into edge guards and then find, you know, PK freeze off the ledge. And, you know, even offstage games with dares and then backers. We haven't really seen a standout player for Lucas yet, but I'm hoping to see in the future. One we have seen a lot more often up in mid-tier is Luigi. Luigi's on the verge of going high tier with how many stupid dumb kill options and combo game he has. Uh, he can easily get edge guarded by a lot of the cast. That's a big issue. Very explosive recovery. He struggles against disjoints, obviously. He's gotten three decent wins in brackets, and he has strong, you know, strong players pilot him like uh, Elegant. Elegant is one of the people who uh, places always really well in SoCal. And if we have more players like Elegant who are able to do stuff with Luigi, I, I can see him at one point being high tier. I mean, this character has insane runs in brackets, and, I mean, a zero death on essentially the entire cast, you can't really ignore that. So, upper mid tier. Um, shout out to Void for this next one. Sheik in upper mid tier. I used to have it way lower, but I, I, I've seen the light now. 
Uh, Sheik is a super quick character. People have actually shown a lot more interest in her lately in the last year. Void had an amazing run at Summit with her getting 5th place. There's been no patchings, however, so in the end they aren't too different. I, f I think like the issue with Sheik is the same issue that Byleth has with Leo. You have one person truly carrying this character far and beyond everyone else. Uh, and Void swears she's amazing, but there hasn't been a single tourney win recently. But, you know, with, it, with his 5th place at Summit, he's probably powered up, and I can see that changing within this year. So... Yeah, Sheik, middle, upper middle tier. Uh, unfortunately, also in upper middle tier is Banjo, who got a slight buff in patch 12.0. Fuck Banjo, I hate fighting this bitch-ass bear. Why would they buff him in 12.0? He didn't need it, just nerf him to the ground. It's a recurring theme now, I don't care. Next up, Mewtwo. Ever since we saw Mewtwo buffed over the last year, we've seen more coming from the character that's been really good in the past. Uh, Wadi specifically has been putting in a lot of work with this character, solidly using them alongside Rob. Would like to see more results of Mewtwo, but the potential is definitely there. Although that tail does act as a bit of hurt box, it's also a huge uh, extender of Mewtwo's combos. Up air is actually a lot more strong, we might realize, as well as back air and the range of his attacks, you know, they allow for a lot of creative combos to happen. So I could actually see Mewtwo getting a really, really good run in bracket, uh, whether it's Wadi or someone else. Middle tier also includes Toon Link. Um, it's hard to see Toon Link's full potential when Young Link exists, as more players offer him instead. At the end of the day, speed is always a factor which makes the character better, and that's the case here as well. It doesn't mean that Toon Link is bad, just underutilized. He's still not a Young Link level character, but he focuses on a safer long-term game instead of having as many kill conversions. Um, so Toon Link, when I think of Toon Link, I think of Marvelous Marco from SoCal and some other players who, who go on decent runs. Um, you gotta be really patient, and you gotta use a War of Attrition, use all the boomerangs, arrows, and bombs that you can, um, and then take advantage of the fact that he is very, very floaty, and able to get some pretty sneaky kills with, um, up smash, with up yet a shield, and find some pretty good strings against people who don't really know how to deal with all his projectiles, so that's the game plan. You bait him out with all the bombs, and when they come out and whiff a move, you kill him with a pretty strong move, so, Toon Link, the Patient Link. Upper middle tier also includes Rosalina. Uh, we're seeing a little more Rosa as time goes on from DeBuzz, but we're really not seeing much use otherwise. Actually, it's one of the characters I probably see the least at all, even in online, like, elite play. She's become more of an oddity over time. Um, seeing potential and wins, she's able to keep us hopeful, but she's traditionally not a popular pick, and she has a bit of a higher skill curve for proper Luma setups. So, if you're going to put time into this character, one, she's got that weirdness factor to her, two, you have to learn Luma setups, which isn't immediately as appealing as other characters, and three, seeing her nerfed from previous games probably lowers the chance of her being used. And with DeBuzz, you know, switching basically to Min Min at this point, a little bit of Hallmar, instead of using Rosalina, this character looking like it, it, looking like uh, it's one of those characters that are in danger at this point, I'll say that. So, not sure if she's going to move from upper mid-tier, but, you know, still is a decently strong character. Wii Fit Trainer also appears in upper, upper mid-tier. Um, Wii Fit Trainer is definitely a very strong character on paper. Um, he's actually won a couple events recently, uh, which has been pretty interesting to see. But deep breathing, multiple projectiles, and nimbleness with a form factor that can escape combos, this is actually a very decent character in the right hands. Deep breathing is very, very strong, very powerful. You don't want to, like, mess with it, and you, you want to respect it at all cases. Um, only issue is that recovery, if you don't know how to mix it up, can be exploitable. And character can have a little more to ask for when it comes to rushdown options, but... We, I have seen potential to this character. Like I said, with, with deep breathing, anything's possible. And to round off the upper mid tier, I have Link. Uh, Link has amazing utility and projectile games. One of the best nares in the game that is so safe. Huge kill power, hugely strong smash attacks. The issue is that his mobility does kind of hurt a bit. No results lately to speak of that come to mind. I'm sure there'll be more in the future. Uh, but this is not a bad catcher by any means. I've seen some players who are just so smart and intelligent in terms of how they use Link's remote bomb and in terms of how they use, um, you know, his range and his strength to utilize uh, and optimize as many kills as possible. And it, at this point, if you played Ultimate Online at all, you probably encountered a cracked Link player and you know what this character can do in the right hands. Um, so yeah, to me, he's the second best Link and in upper mid tier. All right, guys, and that's going to round out our upper mid-tier for our 12.0 tier list. Let me know your thoughts on the list so far. Again, this is my opinion, and, you know, it's just going off what I've seen and what I know, but I'm always down to hear what you guys want to think and say. Um, and, yeah, we're going to come back, of course, with the high-tier portion of this tier list. It's my favorite part of the video, so make sure you don't miss it. I'll see you guys.